Do you need a second to adjourn? No. Yes. Second. Um, what, no, no. Public comment. Public comment. Public comment. All right. Can we settle the limit on this? Oh, no. Oh, oh, right. Ooh, you want to leave it out? Well, all right. So let's open the floor of public comment. <laughs> I am going to be very brief, unlike That's most of you. Uh, Ruth Larson from Alton, uh, I hope, Mr. Ness, that you will bone up on your skills of running the meeting. This was a disgrace to have everybody sitting here for this long, with the two of you going on and on Amen. about your complaints. Amen. You talked talk about your constituents. You, Dr. Schneider, voted in by nine members of the, of the delegation. You were not voted in by the public. We're all watching you. We're all hoping to be proven wrong on how divisive you will turn out to be. But instead, the two of you have repeatedly talked about, <laughs> we'd like to do this with the two other of you, excluding the one remaining commissioner. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's she not shot. letting me not speak <laughs> <Great. laughs> We would not talk about you. Stop quiet. doing that and try to work cooperatively. When Mr. Kadash offered the um, compromise about Rusty McLear, that wasn't even considered. It was such a mild thing to do, and you, you two could not even see a way to do it. And it's not appreciated. Ruth, violating the law is not a mild thing to do. It's not a compromise. The law is what the law is. And you as a lawyer should know that. Thank you, Mrs. Howard. You're welcome. Applause. Uh, speaking of lawyers, it's really kind of ironic to repeatedly during these meetings see the lawyer, Mr. Ness, asking the doctor, Dr. Strang, about procedure. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, amen. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Strang. Um, Peter, how about you tell everyone about your uh, history at Loon? My history at Loon? Yeah. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. May I speak? Hi, my name is. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you Which may go first. Are you pointing to I'm me? sorry. I apologize. I you. All right, so you can go first. Um, my name is Lois Kesson. I'm from Laconia. I have been skiing at Gunstar, actually Belknap, since 1953. Yeah. So I have, since 53 to uh, 2020, when we closed all the buildings for uh, COVID. COVID I have brought my equipment in, I have dressed in lodges, and I think now I am very happy to dress in my car and go up the mountain, and I do not need the stockade to get dressed in. I would like to know, the, you know, how many people, Dr. Strang, that you think you have <coughs> that care. Most okay. mountains don't have it. I have humped up the roads of, of uh, Bridger Bowl without, my, without being able to address it enough. And Park City and Alpine in California. You just aren't allowed to do it. And I think that <coughs> we really need to have that revenue. And I'm really sorry that you did not vote to continue the restaurant right now. Spell your last name, please. K-E-S-S-I-N. Yes, ma'am. Hi. My name is Kathy Dahl, and I'm a grateful skier of Gunstock Mountain. I just want to thank all of you for a super year, anyone out here who works at the mountain. It's been amazing. The grooming has been exceptional. I've been up there 33 mornings this year skiing. Awesome. And, um, my family first came here in the 70s ski, and it's just a remarkable place for families and families. Amen. I actually want to add to that. I have a people from uh, my friend Sammy Blanchett's become a musician up here. He's really been thriving. He's at four or five this Friday, if anyone's interested to hear some tunes. But he has been just astonished, Tom and Pat and Dan, about how amazing the snow and how 
manageable Gunstock has been on a Sunday and how how he's just really enjoyed and fell in love with skiing at Gunstock and how this team and all you guys have put in a lot of hard work and effort to make the last two seasons really remarkable in a COVID struggle. Nice Amen. work, everybody. Amen. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Alex. Uh, yes, my name is uh, Doug Lambert. Um, I just pulled a couple of quotes out from the discussion tonight. Um, uh, Mr. Kaidash, you said, don't fix what isn't broken. Um, Kathy said, we have a great product. Uh, somebody who I didn't know said, we have a little diamond. Uh, the season pass business is growing, and at the last uh, meeting, I believe I commented on that, that you have created a product that is in very much demand. It's like an ideal mm -hmm. business That's model right. when you're selling something that so many people want that you have the ability to close it off and, and still turn a profit. And I applaud that. I, th I think it works. It works well. Um, and I really think that that's something that should be focused on like a laser. Um, so you've created a demand with a desirable product. And the question I have is why the desire to grow? If we're turning such a profit, I mean the profit is enormous, okay? I don't understand why you can't look at the mountain and then say, what do we need to maintain this level of profitability? When you look at new lifts, new runs, which I'm all, you know, I, I love to ski, don't get me wrong. But what we have works. And I think that we're in a situation with the finances that you could make a long range plan to replace and maintain the current structure and operation to maintain the level of profitability and to be able to afford it in a way and pay for it in a way that continues to pro provide value for the county and can be done in a fiscally sound manner without spending money on studies or talking about uh, profit, doing things on property that we don't even own. And, uh, you know, Mr. Kaidash, the people of Guilford voted to preserve that land. Now, I don't think that the people of Guilford um, really <coughs> would want to look back and say, we wish we didn't preserve the land. I mean, that, it's, a, it's a nice plan. And that's part of what Gunstock is all about. It's not just the ski area, it's the beautiful land around it. I happen to use that area in all four seasons. Okay, so we focus on the skiing and we have to be able to pay for things. But there's three other seasons and there's people that use the land in the back of the Leeds property. They use it for other things other than skiing. We talk about people that can't afford to ski or don't want to ski. There's 64,000 residents in Belknap County. And to just, I, I, this whole plan of bigger and bigger, everybody says we don't want to privatize it. We don't want the big corporate thing going on. We don't want to be sunny with miles of traffic up the road waiting to get in there. And I agree with that. I live in Guilford. I also ski at Gunstock. And I'm not sure that I want to go there and have to face a bigger and bigger crowd. If I want to face a crowd, I'll go to Loon, which I go there too. But I just think that the things that you people said here tonight are something worth embracing. You know, don't fix what is broken, okay? It seems like this phase one, and I'll, I'll leave with this, okay? We all know that phase one is the hotel and some kind of a restaurant thing. Okay, again, uh, the lady here has been skiing at Gunstock since 1953. Part of the appeal of Gunstock is that rustic, small mountain feel. Right? We don't want big private companies in there developing the place. Well, what's the difference between a big private company or a local private company? I don't really see any difference. And, and I really think that the master plan should take a look inward, look at what works, and, and see how we can keep this going for the future to sustain it and preserve that property. So. 
I think the executive summary is good, but I think that maybe people need to rethink this too because it's like bigger is not always better. So, thank you. Anyone else? Raymond Howard. Uh, I want to go back to about four years ago, there was discussion about buying a computer program which also used GPS to the tax of the groomers that measure the snow depth. I forget what the name of that program was. Um, does anybody remember? Did we, I was just wondering, did we buy that program? We bought one last year. Okay, and what, what was the cost last year? What was the cost? Yeah. One hundred thousand dollars. It was a hundred thousand. Okay, I think it was originally like sixty or eighty. Um, did it prove valuable for? You know, was there cost savings with that purchase? Well, I mean, there will be. We got a, we got our base data this year, so we know what exactly what we have. Not only does it measure the depth, it measures. Uh, hey, Dan. Tell him about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm just curious. Yeah, no, he's the last one we can supervise. He's the one that found the system and he's the one that's been using it. Dan Carver. Dan Carver, I'm, I'm a snowmaking grooming manager here at Gunstock. Um, so anyways, the snow rate system that we invested in, um, we had previously demoed three or four years ago, as you mentioned, um, Snowsat, which was a competitor to snow rate. Um, we found that the snow rate system, which is what we um, chose to invest in last summer, um, offered us more granular data that we can really pull out, um, as well as offering a cheaper price per machine. Um, so while we did spend 100,000 on the snow rate for this year, um, the 60,000 you referenced would have only been for one machine with the snow set system, whereas the 100,000 got us three machines. Um, but that data allows us to see basically um, each segment of trail, snow gun by snow gun, how much snow is in that section of trail and allows us to pinpoint where we have thin spots um, versus where we have thick spots um, to allow our snow makers to make sure they're firing the correct guns up to even out our snow depths. Okay, thanks for the update. Yes ma'am. Yeah, I just want to reiterate what my friend Kathy said that we've been up in the mountains over 30 times and we've really enjoyed it and you guys have done an awesome job and I really do appreciate it. I've only lived in Guilford for four years and I really didn't think I'd have to be coming to these meetings. I thought it just kind of ran kind of smoothly, which I think it did in the past and I hope that we can get back to that so I can go home and spend time at my own house. <laughs> that's really where you, I, I think you're doing a great job, so let them do their job. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Gretchen Casey, I live in Gilmington Ironworks. I would just like, I'm curious, um, you know, we have about 200,000 skier visits a year. When you reference talking to multiple people about the importance of the stockade lodge and changing in there, I'm curious what that number is compared to the number of skiers that we service. And as a business, it's not just to Belknap County residents. We're servicing all of those 200,000 skier visits. So do you have a, a rough idea or can you share with us how many people you're referencing? Well, I've had people come to me spontaneously and say the first thing I want you to do is, is not let them take away the Stockade Lodge. These are unsolicited comments. Um, I get you know, it all the time I, in the grocery store as well, like believe me, I hear you, but are we talking like five people, 10 people, 500 people, 5,000? I, I can't give you an exact number, but it's, it's not five or 10. You know, I can tell you that when I've raced there, um, every single time I go over there, there's, there's dozens of families in there with, with children. Um, yes, they're picnicking at lunchtime. Um, so there's a lot of people that were used to using that lodge, and I know last year with COVID, they stopped using it, but I, I can be pretty well assured that they would be back there if it was available now. So I think that's something that, that people do miss. I'm not saying that I'm totally against using part of that lodge for a restaurant, but given how successful and how far into the black that we're operating right now, with a lodge that's not functional right there, I don't know that we should be 
um, a slave to the dollar when it comes to figuring out what's going to be the best use of that lodge. In other words, should we should we say you can't use this anymore to put your your gear on, so because we can make more money um, by using it as a restaurant? I, I think we need to look at both because I don't I don't want the dollar to be the only um, determinant of how we use that lodge. I, I personally think you're misinformed with what the intention is or the motivation for updating that restaurant. As a sales manager at Gunstock, I can tell you that it would be awesome to be able to have a function space in the winter to service the dozens of company outing requests that we guess get. Right now that space doesn't exist. There's no um, private space available for, for function rentals compared to um, well, I guess almost any other mountain in New Hampshire that has that type of functionality. And I do believe there's alternatives for people that um, need to get ready closer to the lodge. I certainly understand mm -hmm. folks with disabilities, folks with small children. All of those things are very important. I mm -hmm. personally hate, and I think the hardest part about skiing is getting up to the lift. So I get what you're saying. But I think there's alternatives, so that's why I was curious about the number of people because I think that's important when we're considering the functionality of the space and the best what's in best um, interest for the business and I think all of those things should go into a, a, a larger discussion about the best use of that you have them, I think you're just misinformed on those discussions I, I think you're assuming that we haven't done the legwork I think uninformed. I don't think anybody's made any uninformed, sorry. I just said I think it needs to be more fully discussed. Okay. Sir? My name is Skip Murphy. I'd like to pass a couple things out if that's all right. What those, what that is, is speaking to a right to know that I made of Tom, the operating budget, which is a normal thing of government agencies. RSA 91A is probably the citizen's most powerful tool to keep government in check. And I can see one of the huge problems here tonight, and probably going forward and in the past, is this a business? or is this a government agency? Is it a company or is it a subdivision of the state of a subdivision of the state? Different rules apply to different entities. What I just passed out was in, I have a number of friends here, since I've been a political blogger for 16 years here in Dunlap County and around the state and national. I made a request for the budget. I was turned down for the primary reason of we have to protect the business. I, what I'm showing is that the complete budget was put out a few years ago. Nothing ever happened to the business. And I'm asking the commission if they would take a vote to make sure that you are within RSA 91 precepts in releasing that budget in the format requested. This is not something that I've never done before. I've done it many times to other subdivisions of the state. At the general ledger of the line item, I understand it's not small, but that's fine. I've looked at large budgets most of my career. I want to understand what's going on in Gunstock. 91A gives me that right to do so. I know, Tom, you sent me an exception saying, no, you're not going to do that. I'm asking that since the precedent has already been set, that the commission would vote to do that. I will also say I have done the right to know for past emails of both Tom and Kathy, and those were given to me. Some of it was mundane as expected. Some of it was very interesting, and a few of the emails were rather disturbing. But the interesting stuff, to allay your fears, Tom, contained a lot of financial information. I've done nothing with it. I have not given it to your competition, nor would I give it to your competition. That was not my purpose in asking for the budget at that line level. And given now that uh, 
a friend seeing uh, what I was looking for, sent that to me. Again, I'm asking for an override on that decision. I also have one more right to know. That I have given to the commissioners, which is something that I would expect to be fulfilled. And with that, I say thank you for your time and lawful consideration on both matters. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Um, so I, I don't know how many of you know 91A um, until two years ago. I never heard of it. Um, there's a short memo by a former attorney general on this RSA, which isn't, probably isn't longer than 15 pages long. Um, that is 138 pages long. That's the memo on 91A. So it's a complex statute when you try to implement it. And I believe, I don't know if there was another member of the delegation that suggested that we, and I don't know who offers 91A training. Um, <coughs> that, that would be the New Hampshire Right to Know Association. Okay. It's another advocacy group out there. Yes. And so I, I think that that's a worthy um, undertaking for this commission because um, you can read one section of it, one statute, and then you have to read another one. And I've obviously done that for a long time. But um, some of the finer points are patently ambiguous in the statute. And if there is someone that can help all of us at the commission and management level, understand and comply, I think that's a, a wonderful idea, Mr. Murphy, and I applaud your your um, efforts. I, I think that the thing that I considered about, I was aware of this budget request is, I and I think there are people in the audience that can confirm this, is I'm guessing that the Gunstock, or excuse me, the Belknap County budget is probably available. And I'm also guessing that the nursing home is probably available. Can someone confirm that? I could write to know that tonight. So they're online. All right. So if they're online, I think for you, Tom, and Mr. Murphy's inquiry is if the other elements, and I don't know anything about the jail or whatever the other parts of the Belknap County municipal operations are, <coughs> the nursing home, there are plenty of publicly operated nursing homes, I'm guessing. And so if their budget is available, um, I, I think Murphy, Mr. Murphy's request seems reasonable. So if, um, I just don't know how many nursing homes competitively um, go after the same market. And maybe not, they do, maybe they're do marketing I. the hell out of nursing homes, and I, I just missed it. But, um, you know, we, it says in the 91A, uh, which I, which I, in the past few weeks, I've become a lot more familiar than I want to. Um, it says that you do not have to get out anything that puts you at a competitive disadvantage, and I'm not quoting it exactly. Correct. And there's, we, we are competitively looking at an environment in New Hampshire against a lot of other ski areas. And I would love to see all their budgets and all their line items and all the geo codes. And um, I think it puts that as, as at a competitive disadvantage to be able to let, that, let, let those numbers out. Public. And it does say that in 91A, and I'm sure that Mr. It does, knows more than I do about it. But. It does say competitive. It also says proprietary. But again, it comes back to that tension between are you a business, as in a private company, or operating as a private company, which most of the people here have talked as if it is a business, especially you, Kathy, or are you, I'm a, I'm a, software engineer, principal consultant, software architecture. My job was always to fix things, multi-million dollar pieces of software, and it was always a case of what is the root cause? What is the root basis of what you're looking at? For all of the success that you're having right now, you are a government agency whose product is snow. In all of its varied forms, and all the way that you entertain <coughs> people, but you're still a government agency. Want to buy some snow? Oh, I used to ski until my knees and my hips went and my back. So what is your interest in this budget? That's what, do you, what do you expect? To what do I want to see what the numbers are. Now, as you told me in one of your emails that it was not up to me to tell you who was a valid 
uh, commissioner, I will tell you that it's above your pay grade to understand why I want that budget. Oh, I see. Um, can, can I ask in the in, in the uh, goal of trying to reach some um, agreement here, if we release this three days before the start of fiscal year 17, and clearly it didn't result in the demise of the mountain, why can't we comply with his 91A request and avoid a legal fight? Because I sense that's what's coming if, if you don't re uh, comply with his 91A request. You guys want to tell me you want me to comply with his request? I'll, I'll, I'll co comply with his request. If you think that's a good idea and you feel that that's important to do, I think it's a bad idea. But if you guys want to tell me that's what I got to do, you're the commissioner. Well, the only other option is we go to an attorney and say, do we have an escape clause with this proprietary information and see if they agree. And even if we have an attorney who says to us, yeah, I agree, <coughs> that doesn't prevent him from taking us to court, in which case a judge may say, well, yeah, proprietary is, is reserved for private business and you're not a private business, so you fail. And then we wind up getting whacked with violation fees or, or potentially you personally get whacked with violation fees. I don't want to see any of that happen. So I'm just trying to find, you know, a comfortable agreement or compromise here. All I ask is that the law be followed. And Kathy, I know you said you don't want to hear the word transparency anymore tonight, but I'm going to use it. I mean, what more can we show you than we've just done the whole PL, we've showed you the six year average, six year budget numbers. You need to go pick, pick through every GL code. Like, listen, you guys say, send it to them. You guys say, as commissioners, Tom, I want you to release that information to Mr. Murphy. I'll do it. But you guys got to tell me to do it. Uh, I would make a motion that we agree to comply with Mr. Murphy's budget request. I, if, if the county budget and the nursing home budget are available online, I'm I'm not confident, and are our audit financial statements available? Not in mine. Okay. I mean, it is, it, you know what, to be honest, I, I don't really visit the website very often, so I don't know. So I Peter, they are handed out, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. Gosh, Peter, I'm, I'm glad you brought up yeah. the nursing, I'm glad you brought up the nursing home in the jail. Um, the nursing home and jail are funded by taxpayer revenues of people that have to pay their taxes or they lose their property. This is not taxpayer funded. The income that comes into this business is generated by people who willingly spend their money to buy our products and services. And we compete against people in the public and the private <coughs> sector for those customers. They would love to know what our, our, our point of order here. Pardon? You got to understand that even a businessman gets revenue from voluntary people coming in and buying his product, so he can pay his taxes to the county. I'm so sick and tired of you saying this isn't the county's money. This is the county's money. This is the taxpayer's money. This is the taxpayer-owned business, if you want to call it the business. And everything that goes with that business belongs to the county. I, I have to agree that it's not, the issue here is not where the revenue comes from. It's the fact that the, the mountain is owned by the county, it's owned by the taxpayer. It doesn't matter where the revenue comes from. It's the fact that the mountain is owned by the citizens of Belknap County, and therefore it's a governmental operation, and we have to comply with those laws that apply to governmental operations. Mr. Kaidash, may I address what you just said? I understand what your background is. You've been extremely su successful in business, and I applaud you for that, and you've reaped the, the rewards for that. But in, in providing the snow product, it doesn't matter where the revenue is coming from, as was just stated. It doesn't matter that you're running it as a business. The basis of this is that it's part of government. There are different rules and different regulations 
And yes, some of them, as you were finding out tonight, make the democratic process because of that slow, messy, and infuriating on both sides. The problem is there's, you don't have a choice as far as the commission is concerned or the people who work at Gunstock. I used to ski at Gunstock. I used to love it until everything went to crap in my body and now I can't. But you have to, you have to follow the law Otherwise, I would tell you, if you so believe in it, take it private or lease it and reap that benefit. And then once you do that, then you're not subject to these laws, like RSA 91A and a bunch of others, RS 399, and a whole bunch of others that I could stand here and list, but I'm not going to. All I'm asking for is to follow the law in a lawful request. And I have a number of other requests that are coming. Thank you. Um, you wait. I'm not sure if we're in a public comment period or what, but uh, Mr. Murphy keeps referring to following the law. And it appears to me that there's some confusion about whether the request is within the law. As Tom pointed out, this kind of a gray area about the competitiveness and going down to the general ledger, general ledger detail. So I'm not sure it's appropriate to vote on that tonight until there's more clarity on the law. Thank you. That's why we have five business days to right. comply with this. So yeah. we can well, use the five days. Legal, legal, five legal. Legal. This says March 20. Now that's a brand new one. This is a brand new one. So this is the one that I was served. Um, no, I emailed the right to know for the budget um, quite a few number of days ago. Tom did provide a response within the five legal days, I have no problem with that at all. What I'm asking for is a reconsideration of his no answer from the commissioners. Could we have our legal <coughs> take a look at that to see whether or not that's... that's yeah, we have to know who represents it first. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I would suggest that you guys just go on the website and look up 91A, oh, okay? <laughs> So it's written in English, and laws were written for ordinary people, okay? We don't always have to write for a lawyer. I sued the county delegation, and I argued and won the court case at the Supreme Court of New Hampshire. I didn't spend a dime on a lawyer, okay? I'm a welder, okay? This can be done. Just give him the information, and he doesn't have to tell you why he needs the information. You have to give it to them. Otherwise, like he said, privatize the place. You either want it private or you want it county owned. You can't have it both ways. And I think you have to talk to the commissioners because they will make the decision. And you know, we've given you our opinion. So I I I I believe that compliance with 91A is an absolute. And it if commissioners want to take this, because I think we do have to look at the law, um, as this gentleman suggested, because I do have Attorney General Foster's 138 page memo. Um, I don't know where, I honestly do not know where the line is of the claim that's provided here. And I don't think that we can make the proper decision. My gut reaction is, I think that Mr. Murphy's request may be appropriate, but I think we need to, to look at that. If that, if Mr. Murphy can can um, reach an agreement with us of okay, the commission, because we get deluged with emails over the past week. There, I can't count how many emails come in regarding gun stock. Um, so I think if, if the commissioners concur that we should take this under advisement and try to understand as the commission what compliance is appropriate in this situation, I think that that would be prudent. And is there any discussion? Well, because there's, there's a five-day deadline that we have to comply with a 91A request. We don't have a law firm under retainer for the Gunstock Commission, so we would have to go out and find a law firm, and because no one commissioner can 
act on behalf of the commission without the express consent of the commission, we can't, we can't just empower you to go out and find a law firm and, and engage them for this question. We would have to bring this back to the next meeting, in which case, right. now we're beyond the five days. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I, I, you know, given what the deadlines are, and this is all beyond our control, I, I have to agree with Commissioner Ness that probably the best course of action is to just But my comply understanding with the is if you need to have more time, you can ask for more time if you need to have these questions answered before you reply. You just have to reply. Right. Yes. You have to reply, but we may need more time before we can make a reply. That's my understanding. And Skip has graciously agreed to, I believe, you... gracious. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jay, what are I, you saying that I I've agreed to? What I thought I just heard from you was that you did receive a response. I what did. I just received from you here is dated for... But that's a different right to know okay. If, okay. You, if you read it. has so, nothing to do with the budget. Okay. <clears throat> well, Skip, can I ask, would you be so gracious as to allow us to um, engage an attorney um, and get a response and bring this back to the April meeting and then make a decision on this? Or are we testing your limits of patience? I, know I that's raised, a lot to ask. I but. raised two bipolar ADHD <laughs> sons. I have learned patience. But let me throw this back at you. Meet me halfway. Create the file, put it in escrow. Well, isn't it already in escrow at Gunstock? Yeah. No. With a third party. We can. I, I can find that. And I, I can find a neutral party for that. And but then... The information is not disappearing. Like, I don't know. I mean, you put funds in escrow. I don't... Yeah, I, don't I, I, I think that compl complicates it even more. I, I'm just well, saying <laughs> there seems to be a desire from the commission to want to comply with your request if it's required by the law and there is some dis debate as to whether it's we have protection under the law so we're asking can we consult an attorney to see if they agree with you or if they agree with Mr. Day who says we have protection under the law and that sounds reasonable but with one exception my answer is already no so if you read clauses seven and eight if I get more no's I now have a pattern to bring to Superior Court. I would like to comment that I've made many 9180 requests to different public bodies, and it's very frequent that you get a response if we need more time to look, look into this. This is not something unusual. You don't have to give Granite Rock such incredible deference uh, on something like this. It's, it would be a method, just an ordinary, an ordinary course of business if you need more time to say that. The problem, Mrs. Larson, is that I wasn't given the answer of we need more time. It was a flat no. Yeah, this one really that's, a, that's a problem you put yourselves into. Um, just yeah, asked you, Mr. Chairman, I received a question from one of the delegation members uh, before we run out of time tonight over the weekend concerning the Indy Pass, and I would just like to address and recognize that question. Um, Paul Terry had asked why Gunstock does not participate in the Indy Pass program, and I just thought it would be a good time, with your permission, to defer that question to Tom Day as a resource who is sitting before us, if allowed. We can do that. I, I think if Mr. Murphy, if, if feel the term gracious. If you could be gracious enough to, notwithstanding what your request was, if we can collectively rephrase Tom Day's reply of from no to can we have an extension of time so that the commission can understand our obligations and the impact of your request. Is that acceptable? Given that way of phrasing? Yes. Thank you. Can, can I make a motion then that we um, allow you as an attorney to um, find perhaps two or three law firms that are um, proficient in 91A and bring that information to us at the April meeting and we can make a decision on who we would like to ask for an opinion from? Um, I 
think we probably would have to have a motion that I would to engage counsel. Is that appropriate? Well, but what I want is for you to bring information back and say, you know, I've got three attorneys, one charges okay. this, one charges yep. okay. that, one charges yep. that. I can do that. I, we can decide who we want to go with, and then we can make a motion to an engagement attorney at the April meeting, I, and then hopefully have a decision, yes. you know, shortly. Is that a motion? Is that a motion? That the motion oh, is is that we have um, Commissioner Ness bring to the April meeting a list of two or three different law firms that are proficient in 91A. Oh, Happy to answer this question. Second? We need to have a voice out. Aye. Aye. There, unanimous. Okay. Who seconded? I seconded. I made the motion. Commissioner Kaiser seconded. All right. Is there someone else? Yeah, I had a question. And I apologize if I'll be um, uneducated of the process, but Cannon Mountain is owned by the state of New Hampshire. Yes. If they fall into the same guidelines of 91A, and Gunslock has to. I guess that solves the problem. Here's and we potentially we uh, we have spoken before. Sir, yes. So I I talked to a close friend of mine that has a long time association with Canon, and the challenge with Canon is that its financials are stuck in the DNCR budget, and so if you were um, you had a lot of time and you had the ability to go in and sort of dissect the financials, you could do that, but um, I, I, because that was the first thing that came to mind, mm -hmm. is can you get that from Canon? And I think the answer is it's sort of challenging because it's stuck in so many different other things. It's a fair question. That's a really fair question. Um, so I, I, I think we've answered the question. We've reached a compromise with Mr. Murphy. I think your Indy Pass question is wonderful. Do, we Do you have a quick answer for that? I know that we touched on a couple of pass options, and I believe it was January's meeting, maybe February, where you discussed the merits and maybe not not so much of these pass programs. So if you could just briefly touch on um, the Indy Pass program super quickly yep. for independent mountains. They approached me my first year here, so 20, January 15, 2020. Um, I didn't feel that it was going to fit the model that we were going to try to develop here, that we didn't need to have that as part of our past program. We had our independent passes here, and it didn't work for me, and it worked for some places. I didn't think it worked for them. Is that a management decision or is that a, a commissioner decision? I just I would appreciate clarifying that. Uh, that would be, I would, I can't speak out of turn, uh, but we hire okay. him to do a Sounds like it was a management decision. decision. Yes. I, well, it sounds like yeah, it was sure a management is. decision. The question is, it would it be appropriate for the commissioners to take uh, the question under advisement? Yeah. The, the only reason I ask is because I received an inquiry from my son, who enjoys coming up here to ski with my, my young grandson. He noticed that three other ski centers, small ski centers, Pat's Peak, Waterville, Cannon, and one other one in New Hampshire participated in the program. And he was just curious to know why Gunstock did not participate in the program. And so I told him I would raise the question. In addition to trying to continue to pursue Representative Harvey Bolia's question with respect to a discounted uh, pass for uh, Belknap County residents that doesn't seem to be getting anywhere uh, so both of those are of interest to me as a state representative thank you and an individual and as a father and grandfather so do you have a quick well, response on both those yeah uh, the Indy pass didn't fit our business okay. model I still don't think it does okay. and the pass discount for Belknap County residents I believe that was answered at one point that we had we had take okay. Robin, you were here before me. So. Yeah, that was many, many, many years ago. Probably, I'm going to guess maybe 15 might be a fair guess. Um, we did some analysis and realized that so many of our pass holders, in fact, were Belknap County residents. So rather than punishing the small percentage that were not Belknap County residents, we decided to maintain a very low pass price that benefits everyone. So it's not that we're not discounting 
Belknap County folks, we're just not charging extra to those living outside of Belknap County. If, if you'd be uh, willing to give me your email address, I would like to pass that on to Representative Bolia so she can get this question resolved once and for all Sir. for the numerous residents in her area mm -hmm. who love to ski here and um, are kind of frustrated they're not getting an answer to the question. I'd be happy Thank to. Thank you. Certainly. Uh, are we safe now to, to conclude the public comment portion of the meeting? <coughs> yes. Um, so I, I believe that Commissioner Kaidash made a motion to adjourn the meeting. Yes. I would second that motion. Do we have a vote? Aye. Aye. We have a vote? Aye. Clock TV.